The Unconquered, the story of Poland during World War II. If you enjoy this, please do like and subscribe. Let's check it out. Nobody thought the war and its effects would last half a century for Poland. First, Germany attacks. Then Soviet Russia. We don't give up despite being left on our own. First of all, Sean Bean, one of my favorite ever actors. He is incredible. Um, he does the voiceovers for Civilization, uh, the computer game, uh, for each nation. And the, the drama it creates and his tone and pace just sets for the dramatic effects. And this, with him in, works perfectly. But straight away, it is setting up. So Poland were squeezed, forced by the Germans, forced by the Russians to fight. And straight away, you know how tough it must have been. And I've only seen the first 20 seconds. Really, really moving already. We create an underground state, complete with a government, an army, schools and courts. We suffer two occupations. The Germans murder millions of Polish civilians. The Soviets deport Poles in cattle cars to gulags in the east. They shoot over 20,000 officers during the Kachin massacre. And hundreds of thousands of Poles are forced into slave labor in the inhuman lands of the Soviet Union. Our army is reborn, moving west, where our soldiers are already fighting alongside the Allies. We conquer Monte Cassino. Our fighters wreak havoc and fear by air too. The Germans call us Black Devils as we crush their resistance. What a change. What a change. It's gone from Poland is basically being tortured, being killed, massacred, sent off, deported to, to basically work camps and gulags. But all of a sudden, the fight back comes with the with the help of with the help of the ally allies. Um, and and the, the resistance that the Polish people have. Wow, the change in mood, the change in music. Oh my God, it shows the, the resistance, the fight that the Poles have. Paratroopers make their way to occupied Poland to support the underground state, while our counterintelligence acquires secret plans of the enemy. There are Poles who save Jews, despite the threat of the death penalty. We create resistance movements, even within the German concentration camps. We are the first to alert the world about the Holocaust. Though politics appear to be more important than human lives, It's just taken a whole new element, hasn't it? it? It's it's gone from the physical fight, the physical resistance of the Germans and the Soviets, to now it's it's a political game that you know they've had to resist, and now they have to deal with the politics. So here, for example, over in the United States, it's trying to it's trying to politics everything, and I know that's life. Politics is life, but when there was so much pain and suffering going on you know it's an extra level that the poles had to go through to try and get the support they needed wow this is it's it's surprisingly really tough to watch but also really kind of uplifting at the same time and nobody listens to us Oh, 
Polish Jews fight the Germans in the Warsaw Ghetto without even a chance for success. Our nation comes up from the underground and fights in the Warsaw Uprising. We break the German Enigma code, saving millions of lives. But in exchange for all that we do, we are betrayed. The free world distances itself from us. So, uh, I know this is what upsets a lot of Polish people, and it makes complete sense. Now, I've spoken to my dad about this, and my dad was a Green Jacket. Um, you, if you know Green Jacket, Sean Bean played Sharp, and he was a Green Jacket. So that is what my dad was, obviously not the time, same time as when Sharp was. But he told me that Churchill didn't want to upset Stalin, uh, um, Stalin, and that's why the Poles weren't even invited on the on the victory march, which is just... I don't know if that resonates with today, with the fear of, of upsetting Russia. I think it sort of does, doesn't it? You don't want to upset the Russians, which is... It, it's, it's mad to think. But the same situation which is going on now happened back then you didn't want to upset the russians and therefore because stalin didn't want the poles we went along with it and it's really really sad and really i won't i won't say i feel guilty because i wasn't a born then it's nothing to do with me and, I, and it's the same thing um with germans for example of these days well they've got nothing to feel guilty about when it comes to the war because they weren't even born but there's still that that part of you that feels just sad. Leaving us behind the Iron Curtain. Despite our scars from the war, we still resist. The Pope gives us strength. Workers strike spread throughout Poland. The communists lose. Get out. The Iron Curtain falls. The war is over. We prevail. Because we do not beg for freedom. We fight, we fight for it. Unconquered. Uh, the unconquered. Wow. Um, that's last saying. We don't beg for freedom. We fight for it. Uh, lots of lots of polls have been saying that in my comments on on sort of war ones videos that I've done. As I said, that goes from the lows to highs to lows to highs again. And every time the Polish keep fighting, they keep surviving. And I and I can perfectly understand why the polls, certain polls, may resent um, the support. Possibly, maybe I don't know if that's the right word. The, the, there's, there might be some animosity there. There's sort of some resentment maybe of being almost a part of, of the Europe, European Union or um, getting help from the Brits, for example, because back then we screwed you over at the time when you really needed the support, when everything was sort of finishing for us, but was carrying on for, for the Poles. And so I can certainly appreciate and understand the resentment and the and the unhappiness about it. Um, I, it's tricky now, though, because, like I said, I wasn't there then. You know, so generalizing that just because it happened then, it will happen again. And that's not necessarily the case. It's I think we've got to look forward and we've got to move on. Um, but I can appreciate where where people feel and why you feel like that. In terms of this little short movie, wow. Sean Bean, one, as I said, the pace of his voice, the the the, the bass and the tempo of it, and, and it just the Sean Bean's characteristic voice is incredible for, incredible for telling these types of stories of war and nations. And he is so good at that. When it comes to the animations, I love the the sizing of things. So for example, right at the start, 
it had a small man, a small pole with the huge walls coming in. And that just was symbolizing the the difficulty and the what the poles were up against, you know, and it was how they resist is incredible against these massive forces. What an incredible piece. I'm so glad people recommended this. And there was one in English for starters. I don't think it would have had the same effect for me if I was listening to it in Polish and having to read. So having Sean Bean actually commentating and narrating it, that was special, really, really special. And it sums up, it, 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 it's a very much a summary of what the Poles had to go through during the war, World War II, and then after as well. An incredible piece. Uh, I'm sure you agree. Thank you so much. Um, it, it's it's incredible to have have uh, a Polish audience now. I absolutely love the place. Now I'm going to try it again. Hang on. Let's let's listen. Lajkujcie i subskrybujcie. Lajkujcie i subskrybujcie. Lajkujcie i subskrybujcie. Subskrybujcie. That's got to be right. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.